So this is a revision video on tissue fluid. There are six revision questions for you to try. So pause and do those, and then we can go through the answers. Okay, so for question one, the answer is this. So it's that hydrostatic pressure. And the answer for 1b is this. So because of that greater hydrostatic pressure generated from the heart at the arterial end, it's greater at the arterial end compared to the venous end. Let's use a diagram to just help us with some of these answers. So we, we'll have the capillary, we've got the capillary, and then I'm showing just one side, the tissue, and then we've got the arterial end, and then the venous end of that capillary. We'll add in some plasma proteins, and they're important for some of the answers later. And then we can show that that hydrostatic pressure is greater at the arterial end, and at the venous end, it's lower. So there's a lower hydrostatic pressure. Remember, really important, that what's moving out of the capillary and back into the capillary, we'll discuss that in a moment, is water and solutes. Don't say tissue fluid is moving out. It's not the tissue fluid, it's water and solutes. Tissue fluid is what's formed. Okay, so let's go on to question two. So what's moving water and solutes back out from the tissue into the capillary, into the uh, blood plasma? So the first thing you should have said is hydrostatic pressure. So there is some pressure pushing water and solutes back out. We can show that here. So that opposing hydrostatic pressure. And then the other uh, factor is osmotic pressure, and that's determined by those plasma proteins. So we can show this with the purple arrows. And what you'll notice is as actually the osmotic pressure is greater at the venous end of the capillary compared with the arterial end, and that's because water has been lost uh, across the capillary from the arterial to the venous end. So as a consequence, the plasma proteins are more concentrated at the venous end, so that lowers the water potential at the venous end, so there's a greater osmotic pressure. I'm just putting that note in there. So let's move on to the answer for 3A. How do water and solutes move in and out of the capillary? There's your answer. There are pores, so gaps between the endothelial cells, technically known as fenestrations. The answer to 3B, what cannot move out of the blood plasma? Remember, red blood cells and plasma proteins are too big to fit through the gaps, pores, fenestrations, however you want to call them. They're too big to pass through those gaps. And finally, that process of movement of water and solutes out is a process of ultrafiltration. So, just a couple of points to mention at this point. Uh, so remember, what is the composition of tissue fluid? The answer is this. And remember that the whole purpose of moving tissue fluid in and out of the, uh, or water and solutes in and, in and out of the tissue, formation of tissue fluid, the whole point is to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the cells and to take away carbon dioxide and waste. So that's really the function of tissue fluid. Okay, let's move on to the next questions or answers to the next questions. So your answer to question four should be this. So, at the arterial end, 
there's a greater movement of water and solutes out of the blood plasma. So there's a net formation of tissue fluid. And at the venous end, there's a net movement of water and solutes back into the blood plasma. And so overall, if we add those two processes together, so let's show those at either end, but then overall, there is a net movement of water and solutes out. So overall across the capillary, there is a net formation of tissue fluid. And so obviously the question then is, how is this tissue fluid transported back into the blood? So obviously some of it's going back by hydrostatic pressure, but the other way is in the lymph, in the lymphatic vessels. And remember the lymph drains back into the blood in the thoracic duct, duct in the neck. So let's just show those lymphatic vessels, the open end vessels, they have valves and muscle contractions help move lymph along because lymph, uh, lymph vessels are at low pressure. And so finally, let's go on to the last question. So I'm showing our diagram, one of our first diagrams uh, showing uh, hydrostatic pressure moving water and solutes out and then some hydrostatic pressure moving water and solutes back in and then the purple arrows indicating osmotic pressure moving water and solutes out. So what is the effect of a reduced concentration of plasma proteins in the blood? So this is the sequence of uh, or the sequence of thinking you should be going through to answer this question. Firstly, so reducing the plasma proteins increases the water potential in the blood plasma. So that has the effect of doing this. So if we change the arrow at the venous end, we've got a reduced osmotic pressure moving water out. So that means the answer is that there is a greater overall net formation of tissue fluid. And as a result of that, there tends to be a swelling in the tissue because of the excess tissue fluid formation. And the technical term for that is edema. Just adding a note there for extra information. Okay, so that is uh, all the important information you need to know about formation of tissue fluid.